Hey, good evening. Welcome to the porch with Kevin Stoda. Um, usually I share uh, articles and letters of interest uh, to you at this time of year uh, because a lot of things are happening in the world. And uh, this letter I'm going to show you tonight is from Friends of the Earth. Okay, Friends of the Earth are protecting the environment and the world. And their big goal right now is fighting uh, polluter bailouts. And I encourage you to think about supporting an organization like this and also making a difference by being involved locally um, in making sure that you have good water and that you don't have uh, uh, polluters in your uh, water chain or whatever food supply chain. Okay, um, fighting polluter bailouts. In a matter of weeks, millions have lost their jobs, schools and workplaces have been forced to close. As COVID-19 raced through our communities, it is dramatically changing our way of life, and it also threatens to harm our planet. In the face of a generation of crisis, generational crisis, big oil and gas are pushing for huge taxpayer bailouts right now, money that should be used to help people through this crisis. What did he do with the billions and billions and trillions we gave him before? Uh, at the same time, we are facing new attacks from familiar faces. Big polluters ramp up their assaults on public lands and frontline communities. Other polluters continue to suffer from pesticide uh, pollinators. Excuse me, that be bees. Uh, continue to suffer from pesticide use, and the EPA is neglecting its duty to protect our environment like never in its history. This crisis has shown us where priorities lie. For big corporations. It's maintaining the bottom line, no matter the cost for the rest of us. For friends of the earth and, our, and the members like me, it's continuing to fight for the things we hold dear. Clean air and water, safe food, a stable climate, unsullied public lands, and robust people and planet-centered democracy. Our work has become more challenging in recent months, but it is no less urgent. And with your support, we have been able to react decisively to the crisis while continuing our ongoing fight for a more healthy and a just world. Yeah, that's the kind of organization I want you to be part of. Okay. One that shows people power now. Uh, number one, we're blocking bailouts for polluters. As soon as the coronavirus crisis emerged, Friends of the Earth got to work. We helped lead the environmental community's uh, strategic response to the pandemic, working in solidarity with allies to fight for an initial coronavirus aid package that protected frontline workers and vulnerable communities, not big polluters. Thanks to your support, we were able to fight for oceans. As one of the few groups working on cruise ships, we successfully blocked bailouts for an industry that deliberately incorporates uh, offshore uh, itself offshore to avoid taxes and to skirt environmental and labor laws. Uh, we pressured Congress to prioritize family farmers in the stimulus package and to expand SNAP, food stamps benefits, something that the uh, administration is having trouble actually following up on. Defeat uh, a $3 billion aid package for big oil. Yeah, Our campaigners actively uh, acted swiftly to combat a proposal to buy oil and fill the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, a shameless bid to backstop plummeting prices at the coronavirus, as the coronavirus hit. Now that the CARES Act has passed, we've got more work ahead of us. In fact, the Federal Reserve just announced $750 billion in corporate debt buying as part of the stimulus. We'll be pushing for further congressional oversight to make sure that big polluters can't cash in on this crisis to worsen their environmental destruction. Uh, we're racking up more wins for our pollinators. That means bees and insects. This is the second area um, Friends of the Earth has seen some success. Our bees and butterflies still need urgent help though. Uh, we're not sitting on our hands and letting the pollinators do the work. We won a key victory in March when Maryland joined Hawaii, California, and New York in banning Dow chemicals, bee-killing, brain-damaging pesticide chlorpyrifos. Uh, EPA scientists recommended banning the chemical back in, in 2015 due to concerns about children's health, but since that ban was never implemented, states have been forced to step up to protect their own public health and environment. Europe has already banned this stuff. 
We need it out of America and out of the North and South America, too. Uh, Friends of the Earth applaud the Maryland General Assembly for banning chloripyrifos. Uh, unfortunately, the, big con- the bill contains a sunset clause that makes the ban temporary. We don't need temporary bans. We need permanent ones. We will continue to push the state to ban chloropyrifos uh, completely and permanently as we work with other state and federal legislators to ban bee-killing pesticides. Number three, we're fighting environmental rollbacks. rollbacks. In late March, the EPA announced a sweeping suspension of environmental rule enforcement, making it easier for polluters to poison communities at the direct request of oil lobbyists. But they're not the only ones that benefit. And uh, we're talking about no benefits here for us because uh, I'm sure around Kansas City, around Los Angeles and other places, they've been uh, pumping a lot of secret gases into the air and not notifying the EPA. And uh, no records being made. This is uh, horrible, sad, and destructive. We had a lot of clean air after the uh, coronavirus, but when the measurements come in, there's still all that junk out there. We need to do more. With environmental rules suspended, pesticide companies can use COVID-19 as an excuse to dodge environmental standards. Regulators can ignore Superfund sites. Polluting industries won't be penalized for certain violations of monitoring, testing, and sampling. Taken together, these rollbacks give polluters free reign to poison our air and water with impunity. With our members' help, with your action, uh, we can reverse the EPA rules and make this disastrous decision uh, end. And we don't want to have any broader cuts to our bedrock environmental protections, even as we come into the last part of this election year. Um, Number four, we're standing up to extractive industries. In pristine Bristol Bay, Alaska, regulators are trying to push through the proposed pebble mine Despite the opposition of more than 65% of all Alaskans, 80% of Bristol Bay residents, including Native Americans, and more than 85% of commercial fishermen. Yeah, we don't have a government run by the people anymore. We've got to fix this. It's clear why opposition is so strong. The mine could generate more than 10 billion tons of dangerous waste, including lead, arsenic, and other toxins, wipe out 90 miles of salmon streams, and pollute more than 5,000 acres of wetlands, ponds, and lakes. It would devastate local communities and the last great wild sockeye salmon fishery. Trying to sneak through approval of this project during a national crisis is despicable. Friends of the Earth and our members won't rest until pebble mine is shelved once and for all. Number five, we're preserving our public lands. Big polluters are desperate to get their hands on our public lands. Right now, America's most iconic national landmark, the Grand Canyon, is being threatened with uranium mining, which would poison water, disrupt critical habitat for wildlife, and increase the risk of cancer and other health issues for local indigenous communities. As soon as we learned of this plan, Friends of the Earth pushed the House of Representatives to pass a bill protecting the Grand Canyon from uranium mining forever. Thanks to our pressure, they acted. Now, with the help of our members, we are pushing the Senate to do the same. Meanwhile, in Colorado, the Bureau of Land Management plans to lease over 67,000 acres of public lands in Colorado to big oil for fossil fuel extraction. What for? We're going to be transitioning faster than ever after this pandemic to uh, alternative fuels. This would irreversibly damage the habitats of sage, grouse, elk, and mule deer and lead to devastating health implications for local and indigenous communities. Friends of the Earth, members like you are stepping up demanding that the BLM halt these leases. In conclusion, uh, we're fighting for justice and healthy world for all. Despite the alarming events of the last few months, Friends of the Earth and our members have continued to fight and win the kinds of victories that have characterized our 50 years of existence. With your support, we are ready to keep the fight up for a world that prioritizes people and the planet and not corporate greed. And God save our democracy. Uh, I would suggest that you remember uh, that many of you have not even been to this part of the San Juan River. Uh, It's a gorgeous place, and I want you to go there. Don't let them uh, mine up and down that river and help us 
to have a better world for our children. Uh, we'll talk about climate change in the future, but right now, uh, let's get the EPA under under our sights and make sure that by the end of this year, no president will try to roll back all the EPA efforts. Instead, we're going to implement them, and we're going to do them right for all Americans and for our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. God bless you guys. Thanks for listening to Kevin Stoda at the Kevin Stoda channel. Any comments are welcome. Hope you're doing okay. Bye.